Hello, I'm Bill Hedges, and being able to make this movie with a couple of original cast members, replica robots, flight deck, Jupiter 2, and even original props was a dream come true to me. Forty years since the series started, the fate of the Robinsons was never resolved. I thought it was about time they made it back home, so I took advantage of a rare opportunity of the cast and the Jupiter 2 set coming together in one place, Louisville, Kentucky, at the sci-fi modeling convention Wonderfest. The B-9 Robot Builders Club had a room, and one very talented member, Pat Burns, built a great replica of the Jupiter 2 flight deck and assembled it there. And he also built one of the uh, two robots used in the movie. Dan Livingston and his son Corey built the other robot that was used in filming. Mark Goddard and Bob May were also there as convention guests, and seeing Mark Goddard in front of the Jupiter 2 flight deck, I couldn't resist asking him if I could film him falling to the side as I tilted the camera like he used to do during the series when the Jupiter 2 was rocked to the side. Oh, we used to go over like this, and then we'd go back like this, and Jonathan wouldn't do it. You know? He'd go, oh, my God. The pain, the pain, I can't do it with my back. Oh. Mark was gracious enough to reenact that scene, and I thought I'd put together a short scene with just that. However, when I started editing it, the uh, movie started growing, and for the extra scenes, I used some home movies I took of Mark and Bob doing promos for Channel 19. This is how that would work. Here's an unedited shot. Next, I had to flip it for directional continuity, then zoom in on it and reframe it, rotate it a little, and then loop Mark's voice from an old episode so it sounds like he's saying the appropriate line for my story. Can you fix it? Finally, I added sound effects and music, and this is how it ends up. Can you fix it? Negative. Another element that allowed me to make this movie was the uh, tremendous contribution of the crew at Pendercrafts in creating a computer-generated Jupiter 2 add-on for the Microsoft Flight Simulator. They are uh, big Lost in Space fans too and uh, generously uh, created this free download for anybody who wants to fly a virtual Jupiter 2 anywhere on Earth in any weather or time and you can view it from any angle inside or out. It took me a lot of takes though before I got just the right shots. Early on I was even planning to have the Jupiter 2 go past the runway and splash down in Boston Harbor. And sometimes in my desire to get a good shot I forget about the altitude, but then the uh, Jupiter 2 was built to take a few crashes. I edited the movie on my computer using Adobe Premiere, which allows you to build up several layers of audio and video tracks. There are usually four audio tracks and up to five video tracks, like here with the meteoroids. In keeping with the spirit and feel of the original series, I even used a crumpled up piece of aluminum foil painted with gray primer for the meteoroid. Unlike the original special effects where they just dropped it on the Jupiter 2 model, since I didn't have a physical model to drop it on, I filmed just one against the green screen and used that same meteoroid several times, filming it at different angles, and then using the editing program's uh, motion control to direct their paths. For fun, I put a couple of replica props from Lost in Space in Aunt Claire's home to see if anybody could catch them. And by the way, the Zenith television did have one of the first remote controls, and it was a light beam. One of the props is on the end table. See if you can recognize it. No, it's not the communicator that's from Star Trek. Let's go back. There it is, the upper left-hand corner. Of course, the pen holder. It's really the alien light control from invaders from the fifth dimension. Now, what's that unusual plan on top of the television? Perhaps in his journeys to other planets, Davy found it and brought it back as a gift for Aunt Claire. Since there's no deuteronium in the house, it's safe since the cyclamen can't grow into a monster plant. Finally, that rock on the right looks awfully familiar. Where have you seen that before? Oh yeah, that's the rock that John Robinson circled around with his rocket belt looking for a penny. In this movie, there was one original prop that was used on the lower deck of the Jupiter 2 set. It could have been used in the lab, the galley, or the auxiliary control room. It still has the Fox Prop House name written on the back of it. As you might have guessed, Return from Outer Space was one of my favorite episodes, although I originally put in The Sims home scene simply as a transition from the spinning newspaper to the television news report. 
However, it does serve another purpose. I wouldn't want this series to be over just because the Robinsons got back to Earth. There are others who could continue the adventure. Of course, there's Don and Judy's children, residents of space who never even knew Earth. And then there's Davy Sims and his daughter, whose picture's on Aunt Clara's end table. Both of them prefer space travel to being on Earth. What if the 40-year-old antique Jupiter II is in such bad condition that Alpha Control decides to sell it as salvage? After all, its mission was considered a failure, and museums are already full of more historic Jupiter spacecraft. What if Davy Sims resigns from the Space Corps and buys the robot in Jupiter II with plans to restore it and fly it again? What if indeed? Only time will tell.